Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, we will be going over the duo tandem of Astralon and Countess Lix. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so I don't know when you're watching this video. It could be right when I produce it, or it could be months or even years down the road. But Astralon was a fusion event in Raid February of 2021, and then has a tandem duo ability partner in Countess Lix from the Demon Spawn. So they were both introduced to the community kind of together and I thought it would be fun to take a look and a deep dive into their kits and how they synergize and work together while testing them both out on this account here. And huge shout out to Idolator for letting me use the account. I am not able to get both of these champions on my account so this was a huge help to loan me the account here for a few hours to dive in, do some testing and get some footage. Now before we dive into the full kit and stat analysis of these champions, You've got to say, especially in this case, I mean, Raid always does a great job with the aesthetics, but wow, this is like beyond even good. This is just incredible. Astralon and Countess Lix, they both look super cool having the wings and they even fly in together when they are coming onto the battlefield. They fly in and land together at the same time. It looks super cool. But you will get to see that a little bit later when I show you them in action and show the battle animations and all that good stuff. So in terms of the stats in the kit on Astralon, for the base stats here, obviously the first thing we're going to notice is the base attack of 1619 is very high. So you're going to be able to get a lot of attack on this guy if you want to scale him that way because he'll get a lot of bonus from attack percent chests and stuff like that to scale his damage. Also attack percent rolls for substats on gear. And as far as other things that we noticed in the kit, uh, the base defense is pretty low. 837 for a legendary champion is definitely on the low end. Everything else is pretty much normal, what you would expect. 102 base speed is pretty good. He gets the buffed crit damage rate of 63%. And then a little bit unfortunate that the base accuracy is zero because he does need some accuracy in his build. I would have liked them to throw him 10 or 20 on the base accuracy, but he does at least get 30 base resistance, which can be pretty sturdy. He's not really going to be stacking a bunch of resistance though because it can be pretty hard to scale both the resistance and the accuracy to fit in a build properly. But as we dive into the actual abilities here, the A1 is basically going to be a multi-hitter that hits twice and places the big version of decreased defense. And then this is the really cool part of teaming up with Countess Lix. She is going to team up and join with her default ability where she will attack the enemy two times and place the weaken on top of Astralon placing the decreased defense. So they are covering both bases and they're both doing a multi-hitter and they both have common animations. It looks really cool. And you get the big version of decreased defense and weaken onto the target when they are teaming up to do it. So it's definitely a very synergistic and cool tandem ability there on the A1. Then for the A2 here on Astralon, we've got attack one enemy, ignore defense, that is super strong. It's gonna hit very hard, strengthen and ally protection buffs. And then he will revive a random ally with 40% HP and place a shield buff on them equal to 20% of their max HP for two turns if he gets a kill. I will show you that a little bit later. He runs in, he gets a kill with this Divine Eminence, and then he's going to go ahead and proc that revive and the other effects there. And then also places a shield buff on this champion equal to 20% of their max HP for two turns if he gets a kill. So just another snowball on top of the revive. If you don't need the revive, at least you get that little bit of extra kill, uh, a little bit of extra value on the, uh, at least he'll place a shield on himself there even if you don't need the revive. And then for the A3, this is a super cool ability. Gonna remove all buffs from targets under Veil or Perfect Veil buffs. So gonna be a very good Duchess counter, for example. Then places a 25% weakened debuff on all enemies who had a Veil or a Perfect Veil removed, and then he's going to do an AoE attack that has a 75% chance that you can book to 100 of placing a stun on all enemies for one turn. AoE stun with a 100% chance on an ability that's going to hit pretty hard with a champion that scales with a good base stat on the attack. Uh, that's a pretty insane ability. And then if you pair it up with uh, going against a Duchess or something where you're going to strip all of the buffs away from the whole team and place a weaken, just an insane ability here on the A3, and you can get a ridiculous amount of value in the right situation. Then for the passive, we have got fills the champion turn meter by 3% every time an ally is hit, and decrease incoming damage by 25% if the attacker's attack is lower than this champion's. And I know you guys are always curious about the multipliers. The A1 is going to be a 1.7 times attack, and then you get a multi-hit out of that. So essentially, it's going to be a 3.4 multiplier times attack on the A1. Then the A2 is going to be a 5.8 
pretty hard hitting ability but it does only do the single target the a3 is going to be a 4.0 on the aoe so it's not going to hit as hard as the a2 but you're getting an aoe instead of the single target so in terms of multipliers they are pretty decent they're not like best in the game or in insane or anything but when you pair the pretty decent multipliers with his extremely good base attack of 16 19 he can do a pretty good amount of damage if you get him in the right gear then for countess Lix on the base stats we've got uh everything's pretty normal she's got a little bit more base defense but she gets a a little bit less attack there you can see it's not as insane of a base attack but it's still pretty good it's very close to the 1500 she does not get the buffed version of the crit damage most of the champions in raid are either going to be 50 percent crit damage uh or 63 as a base she gets the 50 and then astralon gets the 63 but she does get the base accuracy of 20 whereas astralon did not he just got the 30 base resistance she gets both so in terms of accuracy and resistance base she gets a total of 50 with the 30 and the 20 whereas astralon only got the 30 resist and then she's just a tick slower on the base speed of 100 but that actually ends up being fine because you do want her going after astralon so it makes sense that her base speed is a little bit lower then we go into the uh, abilities here we've got an a1 that attacks one enemy two times and places the weaken as we talked about before then we've got an aoe triple hitter which is super cool that's not very common in the game and you can book this to a 100 percent chance of placing the big version of decreased speed for two turns and then it also uh can decrease their turn meter by 10 percent that is an insane aoe ability triple hitter big version of decreased speed and decrease the turn meter very I, I love that ability that is super cool then we've also got time dilation that is going to be another aoe and you can book this to a 100 percent chance of placing block cooldown skills and then also decrease the cooldowns of all ally skills except this champion by one turn so that is why i said you want her going after astralon because if she goes at the back end of the rotation remember you're getting decreased the cooldowns of all ally skills except this champion by one turn and she gets two passives the first one is going to be remove one random debuff from astralon and this champion at the start of each turn that is super strong anytime we get passive debuff cleansing like we see in doom priest it is a very cool passive it's going to be available as part of their tandem feature and then the other passive here is going to be fill this champion's turn meter by five percent each time an ally receives a debuff and for the multipliers on countess licks the a1 is going to be a 1.6 but you get the two hits so it's basically a 3.2 then on the a2 it is a multiplier of 1.15 times three so it seems super low with the 1.15 but it's actually pretty decent not amazing but it's decent once you factor in the fact that it hits three times and then on the a3 is going to be also be a 4.0 similar to the a3 of astalon we get a 4.0 times attack on the a3 and in terms of their ai and what they will prioritize on auto at the start of like an arena battle from my testing what i was able to gather was astralon will prioritize the a3 light of sanctity and Countess Lix will also prioritize the A3 of time dilation. But now let's head on over to the champions that I've got built on this account and go over the gearing, booking, and masteries of Astralon and Countess Lix. And remember, I am not on my main account, so it is not exactly how I would build them, but I was able to get it done mostly how I would have done it on my main account. I'll show you the total stats here just in case you are curious. The uh, the HP of 31,740, the attack of 4770. Remember, we want to get that up there pretty high because of his passive and because he is a damage dealer. The defense of 1681. Remember the speed, we want him to go before the Countess Lick so that she will lower the cooldown of his abilities and you'll get a little bit more value that way. Crit rate, you definitely want him at 100%. And then the resistance and the accuracy there of 269. Uh, I would like to get that a little bit higher. You want that accuracy to be up as high as you can get it so that you are getting value out of his defense break and his aoe stun not to mention the stripping of the debuffs if you're going against somebody like a duchess and they're placing veil on their allies that leads us into gear and the banner is typically going to be accuracy most times and you're looking for your best blend of speed and stats this banner is actually really really good for astralon uh, then on the amulet, we're typically going to be going with crit damage and then hopefully getting accuracy and then some stats besides that. On the ring, we're going to want an attack ring with our best blend of stat and the substats. For the boots, it's typically going to be speed. And then on the gear in general, you're looking for substats that have the relevant stuff for Astralon like accuracy, uh, attack, crit rate, crit damage, and speed. 
on the chest we're going to be going main stat of attack we want to get that attack up super high and like i said you're looking for the other stats besides that on the gloves you want to go crit damage if you can if you don't have the good enough gear to make it work where he can get 100% crit rate you can see here you want 15 plus 85 to get him to 100% if you can't get to the 100% it's more important to go with crit rate gloves and, and forego the crit damage you want to make sure that you're consistent and you're critting often the top gear is pretty simple I will show you if you are curious you're looking for those stats that I mentioned before for the booking process, uh, you can save one or two on the A1 if you get pretty good RNG because you definitely want to prioritize getting the cooldown on the A2 and the A3. And if you get lucky enough to save a little bit on the A1, go ahead. But it is decently impactful because you do go from a 30% uh, defense break all the way up to a 50% if you use the books. But it is pretty expensive at the 4 plus 4 is 8 plus the 5 is 13. So uh, you're going to have to weigh your options there. And if you can save on the A1, uh, go ahead. But he's a pretty solid champion, so you don't have to feel too bad about spending the books on him if you've got him. And then for the Masteries, if you're curious, that I went with on, on this build here on the Astralon. Uh, one quick note is on Sniper, remember, it does not work on Stun. See down there, it says, will not increase the chances of placing a Stun, Sleep, Freeze, Fear, True, Fear, or Provoke. And he does that AoE, uh, he does that AoE Stun, and if you don't have him booked, you would think, oh, a, a lot of people make this mistake. You think, oh, I'm going to take Sniper, and I'll at least get that from 75 to 80. It actually does not increase the chance of him placing the uh, the AoE stun, but it will help the consistency of his A1 defense break. Even if you don't have it booked, it'll take it from 30 to 35. So uh, not too bad to go the sniper route, but I think this should be a pretty generally useful setup for the masteries on Astralon. And if I take myself away, you will see that I did go with the Helm Smasher mastery. It is super impactful to have those Helm Smasher procs in the arena. Then for Countess Lix, I'll pull up the total stats here. Now, for Lix, I think it's a little bit more of a priority to make sure you have really good accuracy on her. Remember the AoE, big version of decreased speed, and the block cooldown skills, super impactful. And she can do decent damage. It's not that she can't, but I don't think it's as much of a priority as it is with Astralon, whereas he uh, gets more value out of his passive if he has high attack. And then if he can hit super hard and get kills, he can get revives and really start snowballing based off of being a super hard damage dealer. And he has a higher base attack. But I think with Lix, the priority is to make sure she's a good debuffer and she's tuned right. And then if you can get some damage out of her, that's great. So for the banner, we're almost always going to want accuracy on her. And then you're hoping for uh, just your best blend of speed and stats. Besides that, on the amulet, you want to make sure you've got at least one or two accuracy rolls on it. For the ring, you just want your most status possible. Like I said, it's not as much of a priority to get a bunch of attack on her. But it's nice if you can. And then on the boots, make sure she's tuned right. Get speed and accuracy mainly with your best blend of stats. Now, uh, I did want to get a little bit of sustain on her in this build. That's why you'll see the double divine and and the immortal set i want to make sure she's alive to place those debuffs and i wanted to be able to have the team played in a defensive vein because uh like i don't think they're that incredible as a nuking duo if you're going to go for like a speed nuke team there's a hundred other ways to do that. I don't think that's necessarily where this tandem would shine the best. I I'm sure they could do it. They've both got AoE abilities and they could slot into a speed team and do just fine. I wanted to try them in more of a normal non-speed nuking meta because we've seen that ad nauseum for the past two years. There's a million different ways to do that. But anyway, that's why I went with a little bit of sustain just to make sure I have that uh, like, like versatility when I'm playing around with them. And then the uh, crit damage. These are great gloves for her. We get some sustain from the divine life and they got they got amazing stats there on the crit damage and the, and the speed and the crit rate then uh the shield the helm and the weapon should be a little bit more self-explanatory but i will show them just in case you're curious then for the booking process um i think it's basically the same thing they both take 13 books you'll see here the four plus four is uh four plus four is eight plus the five is 13. i think the main priority is getting this time dilation down to the five turn cooldown and if you want to save books after that go ahead but i would at least try to get that and then depending on your rng you could save a little bit on the a1 it is a weekend and you do get this uh same thing as from 30 to 50 so they are very similar in how they work uh and they're fine as champions you don't have to feel bad about spending books but as a tandem 26 legendary books that's an insane amount so i can definitely understand either not wanting to book them or wanting to save them when you can on the a1 then for the masteries, the main thing that you'll notice is I went with Eagle Eye instead of a damage dealing one like I did on Ashland uh, when I took the Helm Smasher. And the reason why is, like I said, she is 
the I think the priority is landing those debuffs and not really being the insane damage dealer that Astron is. But I think these masteries should be mostly generally useful for Countess. And now let's go ahead and walk you through some of the footage that I was able to record and, and chop down into a few different highlights that I wanted to touch on in this video. So let's fire that up. And okay, now you will see this is against a Duchess. You'll get to see Aswan's insane ability here of stripping all the debuffs. Right there, it is the A3. Remove all buffs from the targets under Veil or Perfect Veil. And then place Weaken. And then we also get a stun. So boom, we remove everything the Duchess resisted it. And we got a stun on the Masha Lead. Remember, he is not booked. So that ability is an insane counter to anybody who does Veil. And it's probably going to be most notably Duchess. So able to really uh, swing the fight there and lead us to an easy win here. And a snowball over the course of time against the Duchess. And then the next one that I wanted to show you was a fight that it looked like it was snowballing out of control. And then we end up clutching it and we get a revive out of the Raglan bringing the Astralon back. And then the Astralon bringing the Countess Lix back when he runs in right here and gets a kill. Boom, runs in and there is the revive bringing Lix back. So you, you can really take a fight that looks like it's going downhill and end up clutching it. So this is going to be a, a more sustained battle against like a Tormund, Rotos comp. Uh, kind, of, kind of a standard like tag team arena type fight that you would see. And it's mainly just to show you there is the animation there for Countess Lix. And just to show a longer fight, the other ones were, were kind of quick and were, and were designed to uh, show something specific. This was mainly just kind of a standard auto sustained fight to, to let you kind of watch them in action a little bit. And yeah, I think it's cool that their A1s both look super similar. They both kind of fly up in the air and then do their, and do their attack. And then this, look at them both flying in together. And then they land at the same time. Boom, I think that's super cool, super well done. And then this is what they're going to prioritize with their AI and what it looks like. It's uh, both of them prioritize the A3. We talked about that when we were going over their kit analysis. And then this is uh, when he does his default ability, Ashlon does it. Remember, Countess Licks will join in. So he does his default A1, and then Countess Licks is going to go ahead and do it as well to attack the same enemy. Uh, to attack the same enemy. So that is going to be most of what I wanted to cover in this video. I had a lot of fun diving in and going over this duo, Astralon and Countess Lix. I think uh, just in conclusion to have a conversation here about the duo, I think they're mainly going to be a good thing to have for Tag Team Arena. When you get to like your second or third best team, I think it would be really fun to have this duo uh, to play around with in Tag Team Arena. I also think... They're pretty generally useful. I mean, you get four hits out of the out of both the A1s. So you have multi-hitters. You have defense down, weaken. Uh, she places decreased speed and block cooldown skills. Ashlon can do revive as long as he's getting kills and, and bring some... They both have passives that bring some value. So I think you're going to get a lot of general utility. And they'll be very viable in the arena. Probably most notably in Tag Team Arena when your roster needs to be a lot deeper. And you need to bring out a bunch of different strategies. So yeah, I think they did a pretty good job designing them as a tandem here. Definitely super amazing aesthetics. And in terms of how they work together and what they bring to the game. I definitely think it's pretty interesting. Really the only thing I would change uh, is I wish the book requirement was lower. Especially being a tandem. And, and if you do have them, you're really going to want to feel like you build them both. I would ease on the, on the book requirement a little bit. I would like to see them both max in that 8 to 10 range just because there's so much booking involved especially if you want to use them as a tandem but that's going to do it for this one as always thank you for watching have a good rest of your day peace